And welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Battlefield 1942. On today's episode, we're going to do Berlin, and this time around we're going to do something completely different. I'm actually going to use the Assault class. Uh, I'm glad that I got assigned to the Russians here, because the Assault gun for the Russians is a little bit uh, better than the other ones. You can see it has 47 bullets per clip. Originally, I believe it had even more than that, and it got toned down. Now the reason I'm playing with the Assault class is not because it's useful in any way, uh, because I really don't think it is compared to the Medic. I've gone on about this before. Wow, I'm actually kind of surprised that I survived that. Um, the, the only reason I'm playing as an Assault is because I just haven't really done that before, and for the sake of completion and for showing off different stuff on this game. <laughs> Why were so many people spawning back there? Okay, I guess there was a guy in the, the building over there. I thought I had cleared everybody out, but uh, you can jump through the window. Very important for the Russians to stop the bleeding quickly. You've got to at least neutralize a flag. Probably have to take it to uh, stop the bleeding for any length of time. You can improve your accuracy of the assault gun by crouching. You also do that with the medic gun too, but uh, it's more important with the assault. And the problem is again, you lose the huge advantage that comes with being able to move around. So, you can crouch or go prone with the assault gun, but well, that went pretty well, actually. Uh, it's really, some luck was involved there, but that was really important to at least get one flag, and getting that first flag on Berlin is so crucial to stop the bleeding for the Russians. And we stopped it fairly early on, we've got a ticket lead. And if we can just hold on to at least one flag, that ticket lead ought to give us a victory. The, what I was saying earlier about the movement on this game with uh, lag and having to lead your targets and everything else, being able to move while firing accurately is uh, your number one concern. With the assault gun, you can fire fairly accurately when you're crouching, and you can fire quite accurately when prone, but you present yourself as a stationary target, which uh, really takes away any of the advantage that the assault gun has in terms of stopping power. Just kind of out of instinct and habit, I picked up the German medic gun, which I always do on uh, the German side, but don't worry, I'm sure I'll die plenty of times on this round and have to go back to the assault gun. I thought I wasn't able to get that engineer before he tossed the landmine on that guy. The primary difference that you're going to have playing as an assault is that you're going to die a lot more simply because you can't, all those occasions when the medic takes out the med pack and heals himself, especially after getting a kill and then running away and trying to get another kill, instead all that damage that uh, the other soldiers do against you just builds and builds and you die fairly easily. Alright, that tank obviously saw me ducking in here. This is one of those things you can do to really frustrate and annoy tanks. Is when they know you're in a place where you've got two different places where you can hide and you just go back and forth between them. But And that's another useful thing about the medic. There's so many times in this game where you get fall damage even going downstairs. So without the ability to heal myself, what's likely going to be the case is um, I'm just going to die a lot more. 
So I'm really being honest when I say it's just for the sake of completion here and to show off different stuff that I haven't shown off. It's not going to be... It's not even really a different style of play so much as you just die more. Germans down to one flag now. If we can just manage to hold on to both of the flags, I suspect we're going to have trouble holding on to that uh, flag in the southwest that the guy in the APC took. People typically don't spawn in there, and we had just taken it. That's also the flag that spawns the tank. See right there, that was an example of using the going prone to increase my accuracy, but of course I did take some damage, so the next time I get into a transaction with somebody, I'm likely to get killed. Alright, now I'm a little bit closer, and yeah, that finishes me off. If I'd been a medic, I would have hid and then rehealed myself, and then gone back at it with full health. And what you also saw, um, when that weird bullet hole looking thing appeared in thin air, Sometimes there's edges of structures that you can't actually shoot through, but you can see through. They just programmed it badly, and that's really annoying if you're uh, trying to use the go-prone, use something for cover, and then just barely peek out and shoot somebody. Because if you shoot and then it doesn't actually go through, that you can lose your one opportunity to get a good shot. But it's important to use the cover that you can find, simply because, again, going prone makes you such an easy target, and it almost forces them to shoot directly for your head. Often people shoot, like I just did there, uh, aim for the body, just to ensure that they get at least some kind of a hit. But uh, if you go prone, then your head is right in the middle of your body. They can shoot toward your head, and even if they miss your head, they'll hit your shoulders. So people are more likely to aim for the area that's going to take more damage off of you. Alright, that tank knows I'm in here, so I'll just go into the second row of rooms here. That'll protect me. There's one area in this building where you're able to get inside the flag neutralization radius. And it's right down here if you go all the way behind the stairs. And there's also an ammo crate there. You can see the flag icon. Uh, presumably someone had seen me when I went down the stairs there, but that's a very useful technique. If I had been able to neutralize that flag, assuming we held all the other flags, if I neutralized that flag, they'd have nowhere else to spawn. But uh, I was the only guy there at the southwestern flag. So it's not a surprise that we lost that one. I really wouldn't expect to hold it. Your main priority is just to hold a flag, which is probably going to be the flag closest to your uncapturable base, just to keep the ticket bleed off. It looks like we may be struggling a little bit. Uh, it's neutral at least, so there's no ticket bleed. But we've still got a nice lead there of 60 tickets. If they re-inflict bleed against us again, if they re-inflict ticket bleed against us again, it's likely not going to be for that long. It's hard for them to be combined into one solid mass, except at the beginning when they're all together. Stay tuned for part two.